have a group of courageous women who say, I'm more, I'm ready to move on into my destiny. I'm ready to move on into what I know I can do. I've been sacrificing all my life. I've been sacrificing for my uh, significant other. I've been sacrificing for my children. I've been sacrificing for my boss. Now it's my turn. My turn to learn to read. My turn to learn to write. I mean, I know that some of you have some relative, if it's an aunt or grandmother, who couldn't read or write because they were sacrificing for their children. So today we've come to, and because you have joined us, that you are participating in allowing these women to learn to read and write. So we just thank you for, for what you've done. And now we'd like to introduce our presenters for the evening. The girl in Jesus' name. My sister, I'm an that was started, I guess about four years ago we started this. The original members were Baku, Saran, Kaba Jones, Celia Marie, some of you saw the video, you saw a light-skinned sister in there. Her name is Celia Marie Jones, uh, Karen, Coco Twagli, and Patrice Jua. We started this four years ago. And prior to this, we used to have a sisters networking event. And sisters is an acronym for Sisters Inspiring Sisters to Achieve Success. And that's why we're here today. So we're gonna see what's gonna happen. So I have a bag here full of topics. I'm gonna ask somebody to pick a topic and we're gonna find out what it's about. Hold on, can you help me out here? Just pick a topic. And we're gonna call on one of these sisters to speak. Find your passion. Find your passion. Who would you guys like to hear from on find your passion? Anybody, call a name, call a name. Come on, let's make it interactive. Find your passion, anybody? Call a name, who are you here to see? Who are you here to see? Let me hear you. Don't call the person name again. Beulah, okay wait, Beulah, you the youngest, you the baby of the group. So I think we're gonna call on Beulah. Beulah, come on up. Y'all give it up for Beulah. Beulah is the founder of Nemini Foundation and a volunteer at Youth for Change. She is also a poet and just a really dynamic young woman. She's at Cuttington University now, her second year in college. Please give it up for her. If what you do diminishes by time, then it's not your passion. For consistency and commitment, it's a true attribute of a passionate person. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Beulah Nimini, and I'm honored today to share my story on how I found my passion. And I hope it inspires you all to find yours and walk in the greatness God made you all to walk in. So when I was a child, every time I got asked what's your special talent, I'd say talking. I did not know how to sing or dance. I just talked. Everything I heard, I said it. It was a problem in the beginning, but then everybody else got used to it because I'm going to say what I have to say. 
even if it makes someone angry, that was something very bad when I was a child. And you know that we're in society. So as I grew up, the question changed from what's your special talent to what are you passionate about? I mean, I was involved in everything. Like people can say jack of all trade, master of none. But I hadn't found my passion. I did not know what drove me to do what I did. So I made up a line every time I was asked. And the line was, I'm passionate about arts. I think the world is a big art gallery and God is this really good painter and everybody has a role to play in the art gallery. I made that up. People believed it, but I did not. <laughs> because it was not something I was passionate about. So I created a habit of reading and I debated and uh, I started to write poems. So all those things imparted me. And then one day I sat and I told myself that I'm changed. And I got the question a lot of times, why do you speak so well? Why do you do this so well? I realized it was because I educated myself, both at school and at home. So I believe that once a person gets educated, their minds are emancipated from mental slavery. And they control not only their bodies, but they have self-dependence. So I believe that I was passionate about education. And the thing here is, I wasn't passionate about it for myself because I was already getting it from my parents, but I wanted to transform another person's life. But the thing here is I was broke. I could not transform anybody's life if I didn't have money in my pocket. So I knew exactly what I was passionate about, but I did not know how to go about it. So one of my many visits at the hospital, I met a janitor and we had a conversation as God could have it. His wife was friends with my mom. And fast forward, a few weeks after my mom called me and she said that your friend, two daughters will not go to school this semester because he has four kids and he thinks that the two boys should go to school ahead of the girls. And then maybe next year if they have money, they can send them to school. So I thought to myself, I said, um, I told myself I was passionate about education. So what am I going to do? I have 150 United States dollars. I had just graduated high school. I want to use it to get new clothes to go to college because I told everybody I was going to slay that semester. But the thing here is I had a skill preference, whether to choose to impact or to use the money and get slayed. But I realized that impacting was more important than slaying. Slaying is really good because all of the on us are slayed today. <laughs> so I used the $150 to pay the first semester fee. I had no idea how I was going to get the second one. And the second one delayed than I taught. So I paid it too. And then I sat by myself. I thought to myself, if I wanted to continue with this, I need a sustainability plan. So I decided to have poetry events to raise money for students to go to school. The first event I had, I invited a lot of people. I had a lot of share on the internet. I anticipated a huge crowd. I thought the place was going to be so full. There was going to be no seats. Guess what? I could count the amount of person that went on my fingers and my toe. And probably some of my fingers and my toe will still remain. But that did not stop me from pursuing my passion. So I was able to donate to 20 students, the first poetry event, 2018, March. And then I didn't want to have another one again because I was like, eh, maybe people will not attend and eh. But then I had a family, Youth for Change. They encouraged me to have another one. So I had another one in uh, August of 2018. And guess what? I anticipated to send 20 children to school but I was only able to send 10 to school that year, last year, actually. So, I found so much fulfillment in sending them to school than I found in going to school myself. <laughs> but the thing here is, we need to learn to find our passion. And the way to find our passion, one, is to find ourselves. Sit back. Relax, ask yourself, who am I? Most of the times we don't ask ourselves that question. After we've found who we are, 
Second, we need to find what we find fulfillment in doing. No matter what everybody else says, no matter what the society thinks, find something that you find fulfillment in doing. Thirdly, you need to build upon it. Yes, you may find something that you want to do, but if you sit back and don't build upon it, it's not going to be prosperous like you want it to be. Lastly, you need to live by it. No matter how much the world is going to look down upon you, I want you to build what you are building and live by it as an individual because commitment is a true attribute of a passionate person. So before I leave today, the stage, I'd like to perform a spoken word. It's titled Black Queen. It was written for Black History Month and the International Day of Women. Happy International Day of Women. Okay. Born of the earth, throned in the heavens. Glory is my name, my hue is my sin. I have tried to survive regardless of my bloody past. Memories of my children tied in chains still hang over my head like the big blue sky, but I refuse to cry. So I laugh in the midst of my pain for the stroke of things could not steal my joy. I was conceived by light. No amount of darkness can deem my shine. So I embrace my history with open arms, for I am the Black Queen. It's no wonder you fear my name. I've walked on troubled waters. Life began between these ties. I fret the pyramids. I am the now. Casting the arms of pains, I rose and became flames. These arms you see are the pillows of the world. I hold everything in balance. I am the black man. Shaken, broken, stumbled upon, cast to die, yet I live. For I am a purpose. And even though I go through trials, I know I will succeed. I give life even when offered death. I turn poison to remedy, toxic to magic. I am feared by fear itself. And though I journey through valleys of unwanted compliments, though I journey through scorching sand and blazing suns, I walk unafraid, for I am the keeper of my sons. Until the day the Lord calls my name, the world will forever sing of me. The Black Queen will forever win. Y'all give it up for her, like you mean it. Come on, y'all, one more time. Beulah is 21 years old. She, when I told y'all she's dynamic, y'all didn't believe me. Like, I don't know, when she speaks, it just moves me. I know some of y'all, who's, who's Alex Devine? Who's, who, okay, this is Alex. Alex is like, we are coming deep to support her. So who's Beulah's fan support? Give it up for her. <laughs> Congratulations, that was awesome.